The Alibaba team is back with a massive new model release. Today they have officially launched the new Coin3 series. This is where it includes two new open source mixture of expert models. We first have the Quen 3 235 billion parameter model with 22 billion active parameters. Then secondly, we have the Quen 3 30 billion parameter model. This is a lightweight model with just 3 billion active parameters. But on top of this, they have six dense models ranging from 0.6 billion all the way to 32 billion parameters were actually released under the Apache 2.0 license and they're optimized for 32K and 128K context lengths. Now performance wise, these models are definitely insane. The flagship Quen 3, the 235 billion parameter model rivals top tier models like DeepSeek R1, it is going up against Grok 3, Gemini 2.5 Pro, as well as the OpenAI O3 Mini and the O1. And you can see that it outcompetes them in almost every single benchmark, from coding all the way to mathematics, as well as general reasoning, which is just insane. Now, surprisingly, the 30 billion Quen 3 series model, the lightweight version, is kind of doing pretty good in comparison to many of these other models like GPT-4 Omni, as well as Gemma 3, DeepSeek V3, as well as their previous model. And you can see that it does quite well in almost every benchmark. And this is probably the version that you would want to use locally, obviously because of how lightweight the model is. Now, one thing I found surprising is that Quen3 uses the mixture of experts architecture with only 10% active parameters, which is drastically cutting inference and training costs. They've also introduced this new hybrid thinking mode, which allows users to switch between step-by-step -step reasoning and instant answers based off the task complexity and budget. It supports for 119 languages, and the Quen3 is highly adaptable for global applications. It's pre-trained on 36 trillion tokens, twice that of Quen 2.5, with enhanced reinforcement learning, and it also brings stronger coding and agentic capabilities, which you saw within the screen right now, that it's capable of doing different sorts of tasks on the computer, as well as taking on different actions with tool use and function calling. Now, it's also something that has been improved with MCP, and it's something that will be tested with real-world support through today's video. Now, Quen3 also showcases a massive efficiency gain, which is positioning itself to be a major breakthrough for fast, scalable AI deployment, which is why what we're going to do next is showcase what you can actually do with this model and showcase our personal benchmark test that showcases the performance of this model. Before we get started, I just want to mention that you should definitely go ahead and subscribe to the World of AI newsletter. I'm constantly posting different newsletters on a weekly basis, so this is where you can easily get up-to-date knowledge about what is happening in the AI space. So definitely go ahead and subscribe as this is completely for free. Now say if you want to get started with this model, you can go ahead and use model scope. You can also chat with it within Quen's chatbot. This is where you can access both of the models and this is easily the best way to get started with it. Now what you can also do is locally install it with the dense models that they have released. So that way you can easily get started with it. But now what we're going to do is test this model on a different sorts of benchmarks that assess it in different categories from software engineering tasks like developing a front end all the way to problem solving and mathematical equations. So let's go ahead and test this model out. Also, one thing right away you'll notice is that they have MCP support coming to the chatbot, which is kind of interesting to see. But we're going to go ahead and have it create a front end and we're going to have it set to thinking mode, which is where it's going to utilize the full capability of this model to have it create a front end of a modern note taking app. And I'm asking it to make it so that you can add sticky notes. So let's go ahead and see what it actually ends up generating for us. And there we go. It looks like we have finished generating the contents for this sticky note app. So I'm going to go ahead and paste it into an online viewer to see what I had created. I actually forgot that they have their own artifacts. So I simply clicked on it and there we go. We have this note taking app and you can see that it does have the ability to add different titles as well as add a note and you can add multiple different types, but I want it to be drag and dropped. So let's go back and actually tweak that setting. And there we go. We now have this new functionality added and I'm quite surprised to see that it was able to do this. So definitely good to see that it was capable of doing this first prompt of going ahead and changing up this modern front end app for us. So let's go ahead and give this a pass. Overall, it did a great job in terms of designing that simple web app structure with interactive components. So let's now go back into the chat and let's go ahead and generate the next task. 
this is where we're having it create the implementation of Conway's game of life that runs within the terminal. And essentially, this is something that tests the model's ability to implement a cellular annotation. It checks logic for matrix manipulation. And it's something that is a software engineering task that focuses on algorithmic implementation. So let's see what it actually ends up generating for us. So I've now pasted in the different sorts of contents within this python file and we're going to go ahead and run this game of life python file now we just need to simply go ahead and enter in the amount of simulations and there we go we now have the game of life running so let's go ahead and give this a pass next up we're going to have the model generate svg code for a simple butterfly now let's go ahead and see if this is something that the model is capable of doing testing if the model can reason visually and generate the correct svg code to represent the shape of a butterfly now this is probably one of the hardest prompts for most models to actually complete but let's see if this model is capable of doing this all right so i got this generation and i don't know why but it reminds me of the pokemon that we saw from ash's mom's house and this is something that resembles the butterfly shape that was generated by this model in my opinion so overall it did not actually complete this task but i guess it did get the antenna right and maybe the main body but it's still not connecting and looks like does not look like a butterfly so unfortunately this is a fail next up we're gonna have it work on this next task which is where we're asking it this equation where a train leaves city a at 9 a.m traveling at 60 kilometers an hour another train leaves city b at 11 a.m traveling towards city a at 90 kilometers an hour this is where the total distance between city a and city b is 450 kilometers at what time did the two trains meet and show all the steps clearly this is essentially a math problem which focuses on relative motion it is focusing on the distance equation where speed times time and it is focusing on trying to evaluate the model's capability of performing multi-step calculations clearly so let's go ahead and see what it actually ends up generating for this and there we go we do get the correct answer which is 1 12 pm but the only problem is is that the format of this answer has been messed up because i had selected artifact mode which is to showcase visualizations of different generations like images or code but in this case that was not needed for this prompt which is why the format has been outputted like this but nonetheless we did get the correct answer and we did get the correct step by step process i don't even know what this was but it did get the correct answer which deems this a pass next up we're gonna focus on another software engineering task which is focusing on creative programming this is where we're having it code a tv simulator with numbered key channels we're leading from zero all the way to nine and we're trying to see how creative the model is in terms of animating different sorts of channels as well as array mapping keyboard input handling as well as enforcing canvas masking in p5.js so let's see what it ends up doing so I've gone along and I've copied the code from the Quen chat and I've pasted it in within this P5 online viewer. So this is, I guess, the test channel. It doesn't have functionality with these buttons, but if I am to click on my number pad, you can see that there's different sorts of uh, channels that were created. And it did, I guess, do a decent job in terms of generating all of these different sorts of channels. This one seems to be static, but the other ones, I guess, do do a good job in terms of generating some sort of creativity so i would give this a pass but i wouldn't beat it against many of the other models or what the other models were capable of generating like the gemini 2.5 pro or the new 04 high next up we're going to go ahead and focus on a research article about climate modeling and we're going to have it reason and summarize the article we're trying to see how well the model is in terms of reading multiple sections integrating ideas and infer cause effect relationships within that article so let's go ahead and provide an article and then have it focus on these three different sections and there you go the model did a good job in the reading comprehension of the article that was provided it synthesized it and it reasoned with it with the question i had provided and in this case it did a good job in reading multiple sections integrating ideas and i'll putting this answer over here which talks about the hybrid approach which outperform traditional models with the prompt that i had given it so overall this did a great job in the output of this uh reading comprehension prompt so let's go ahead and give this a pass now lastly we have this prompt which is focusing on a logical puzzle where we're trying to find the guilty person within these multiple different combinations 
and essentially this is where we're trying to see how well the model is in terms of deductive reasoning we're trying to see how well it is in terms of getting to the right conclusion only one person actually tells the truth within this prompt and we're trying to see how well the model is in terms of checking statements assuming each one tells the truth and finding the consistency from this prompt so let's see what it actually ends up breaking down and there we go we have a quick summary table of different sorts of step-by-step -step analysis of getting the right answer and it did actually get the right conclusion where it had found david guilty which is actually the correct answer so the model did a great job in terms of logical reasoning with this puzzle over here so i'm kind of surprised to see that it did do the correct steps to solve this a couple of the other models actually failed on doing this which is kind of surprising but it's great to see that this Quen3 model was capable of doing this. So overall, I do believe that this is a great model in most uh, cases in different categories. If you like this video and would love to support the channel, you can consider donating to my channel through the super thanks option below. Or you can consider joining our private discord where you can access multiple subscriptions to different AI tools for free on a monthly basis, plus daily AI news and exclusive content, plus a lot more. But in conclusion, here's my two steps. It matches top models like DeepSeek R1 and O3 in multiple categories like math, coding, and reasoning, which is great because it also does this with fewer active parameters. And this is thanks to a mixture of experts. It's fast, it's efficient, and it has a real hybrid model, which is great for instant answers and deep reasoning. So that is actually a great added benefit. It's open, uh, open source, it has open weights, which means that it will let you access all of these different dense size models on your local computer. Obviously not the largest model, but you have so many different options of using this on your phone as well as your local computer. And it is definitely a game changer, especially on fast infras hardware like Grok. So it's overall a huge step forward for the open AI model space. I definitely think that the techniques that they've used to develop this model will be used in other cases, which is astonishingly great for people developing AI models. But overall, I think that this is something that you should try out locally as it's a great open source alternative to many of the other models we've seen like O3, O1, as well as DeepSeek R1. But with that thought, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video and got some sort of value. Subscribe to the second channel if you haven't already. This is a great place to get caught up with whatever's happening in the world of AI. Follow me on the newsletter as well. Make sure you join our Discord. Follow me on Twitter to stay up to date with the latest AI news. This is where I'm constantly posting about whatever's happening over here in the AI space. And lastly, make sure you guys subscribe, turn on the notification bell, like this video, and please take a look at our previous videos because there's a lot of content that you will truly benefit from. But with that thought, guys, have an amazing day. Spread positivity, and I'll see you guys fairly shortly. Peace out, fellas.